when, when you say taking risks that you hadn't taken before, and I can think of some examples. Did you wish everybody listening to us had read the book as I had so I wouldn't have to keep putting in all the relevant background so they could understand it? But I'll try my best. But one of the things I would have said probably wrongly about all the Monroe that I've read and enjoyed over the years was all of it could have happened. All of it could have happened in a, in a literal sense. Is yes. that fair? Yeah? Yes. And in Open Secrets, there are some things that in a literal way probably didn't happen. Probably so, didn't. So, mm -hmm. so is that a different kind of writing for you? Is that leaving? Yes, I think it is, because when I began to write... To, um, when I realized how Carried Away was going to end, I fought it very hard. I thought um, I thought mainly that it would be so difficult and that it probably wouldn't work. And I was talking to a friend about it, and he said, well, you know, it's easy to get into that twilight zone sort of thing, uh, a kind of... Um, ghost stories often have a kind of cheapness about them. I don't know what it is. A kind of um, oh, contrivance that you uh, are restless at, and you don't—you somehow think you've been trifled with as a reader. Now, I didn't want that to happen, mm -hmm. so I was having a lot of trouble with the ghost, which isn't exactly a ghost. To me, this is an example. The ending of that story is an example of, of what I'm talking about: alternate reality. Yeah. Okay, I think. This is what happened. The man that she thinks she might have loved, her dream love, is killed. She marries a completely different man, has a completely different kind of life. But suppose he hadn't been killed, yeah. man number one. Suppose but she, his head was cut off. When she meets him at the end, his head isn't off. Okay, supposing the story diverges that far yeah. back and she had married him. Or at least she had seen what kind of man he turned out to be, because actually he is married already. I, forgive me if I lose track of some details. <laughs> and um, what interested me, really, was what sort of man he would have turned out to be in the real world, which is the man that she meets at the bus station. And how her life, uh, which is sort of centered around a, a dream lover and a real husband could then come up against the real lover. Now, even that is making it much too explicit. I'm boxing myself yeah. in saying these things because I want, I want something to happen that you can't quite put into words in that way. But as I began to say, I had a hard time reconciling myself to doing this. I thought I had the story when she married the factory owner and went on with her life. But I didn't. It didn't satisfy me. It didn't work at all. I had to get this other dimension in, so I went ahead and did it. Even, even as I hear you give that, that sketch and, and, think, and try to listen to it through the ears of someone who hasn't read the story, I realize how little justice it's possible to do to, to even that, that story by picking out one of its threads. That's because true. The, the magical thing about Carried Away for me, I mean, that's a magical thing, but we also have this marvelous romance that comes, that starts, she's the librarian, and that's he right. remembers her, the soldier writing from overseas, and, start, and, and writes to her, and there's something, there's something, can I say, there's an undercurrent of eroticism behind his vision, his remem memory of her in the library, Yes, she doesn't I even know so. who he is. Yes. And she never sees him to know him. No. No, except at the end. So that's enough for a story there. But yes. you've got the other stuff in it going as well. Oh, I've got a lot going. I've also got the social history of a piano factory in a small town, which, you know, is a, is a quite realistic thing. I've got the, the factory owner and the... It starts as an song. organ factory, and then when organs get replaced yep. by pianos, it becomes the piano factory. That's right. Where did that happen? In Clinton, the town oh, where did. I live now. Yes, yes, but but none of this other stuff happened in Clinton. I hasten to add. But um, I just want all that in. I don't really know why. The story just doesn't have a single thread for me. It has a 
an awful lot going on. Every one of these stories has so much going on. Actually, the way that story started, the three stories started from the same anecdote. I heard from my husband, who was born in Clinton, that he had heard a story that he hadn't been able to verify, that before the First World War, a librarian from Clinton went on a trip to Europe and was captured by bandits in Albania. He'd heard that. He'd heard it. Yeah. And I said, well, how, ca how can we find out more about this? And we started looking in the newspapers and, and uh, doing all we could to investigate. And we never did. We never did find out if this is true or from what uh, roots this story came. But I started thinking about it. And so I got thinking about librarians. And I got thinking about Albania. And I have... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was thinking about Albania, librarians, and I was thinking, about, what the hell does that mean? I started thinking about Albania. Well, captured by bandits in yes. Albania, or bandits yeah. from Albania, yeah. may just have been a cliché that people used when you didn't come back from a trip at the time you were supposed to <laughs> right. before the First World War. And, um, and anyway, I got the story of the librarian going, and I lost Albania... I got the First World War, I got the time period, and then I got a completely different story called The Albanian Virgin. Yeah, which about is about Albania. a librarian who goes to Albania and gets captured by bandits. Well, it doesn't say that she's a librarian. No, it doesn't say she's, she's, a librarian. she's a young woman with enough money to travel yes. to Europe on her own. And she her does. Her family doesn't know for sure, it isn't aware where she is. That's right. And then I got a story in between these two called Real Life, A Real Life, which is from the idea of an Albanian virgin. When I, I was doing all this research on Albania, I discovered that there was, before, uh, I, I read a wonderful book called High Albania by Edith Durham, one of those lady travelers mm -hmm. from England who, who had very uh, uneven health and was ordered to travel, and so she went and rode around the mountains of Albania. And, um, and uh, she discovered that in Albania... Uh, the roles of, of men and women at that time were completely separate, and women did, uh, did all the work, while men were didn't live very long because they were always engaged in blood feuds, and they had to keep polishing each other off for the family honor. And they so they spent most of their time with their weapons and, and riding off to kill people. But if a woman would take a vow not to marry never to have sex in her life. She became an honorary man called an Albanian virgin, and she was allowed to have complete freedom, own property, 